BB Photo X1.5 to FX and welcome back to another video. Well, uh, when you have a, a camera like my Nikon D7200 as I have here, uh, you can get it uh, a both name brand Nikon's own proprietary or as I have here, uh, a, a third party battery grip here for the camera so that you can do, you know, uh, vertical and horizontal and still have controls for, you know, uh, sh uh, aperture control, shutter control, and so on, whichever way you want to hold it. But this is not really a new concept. Uh, Nikon has, uh, for uh, some time, uh, for their film uh, line, uh, camera lineup, uh, done some different motor drive units. And uh, yeah, these are the motorized uh, manual focus, or rather manual cameras in my Nikon collection, but I thought we should go through the motor drives a little bit now in the order here and uh, keep in mind some of them are more uh, simple in the uh, function and some of them are a little bit more advanced so to speak oh if you want a, a humoristic youtube channel uh, that is about motors in another aspect Check these guys out, Bad Obsession Motorsports. I'm gonna put a link to their channel in the description below. Really dry English humor, cup of tea. Lipton Yellow Label. But anyway, let's start with the most simple of the ones in the bunch. The Nikon EM with its motor drive, it's the MDE. Uh, this is uh, a motor drive that takes uh, six AAA batteries and uh, it will only be, uh, it's usable for uh, what should we say only single action that means that it will only take one frame per uh, trigger uh, pre depression or uh, trigger depression no every trigger uh, operation i should probably say it doesn't have any automatic rewind feature. Uh, it has the clutch disengagement button on the bottom here that you press and then you rewind as per usual. I know that this particular one, the MDE, is actually a little bit of the only universal one in Nikon's lineup of motor drive units, since this can be used on some different models. I thought I would use it here on the EM because I didn't want to break up the color scheme here that is all black. Yeah, uh, let's move on, shall we? This is one that I haven't really had that much time to test out. I know it works. I've tested it with the on the camera with no film in it to make sure it works properly. And it's the MD11 and it's mounted now on my Nikon FE. It's a brilliant camera this, uh, it's basically like the Nicromat EL but uh, with a, a auto indexing tab instead and a good hot shoe as well, as well as a PC sync cord. But anyway, this motor drive unit will work with 8 AA batteries and uh, it has a both a single and continuous mode of operation by a twist releasing a little bit of a lock and you can choose between s for single or c as in continuous which means that it will go up to three and a half frames per second according to the manual and i have a little bit of a cheat sheet here so i can remember all the facts about all of these so it will go up to three and a half frames per second, but then you need to use a shutter speed that is greater than one two hundred and twenty-fifth of a second. So that's the MD11. Very good motor drive unit, really cool little stuff. Then we have probably one of my favorite cameras, the Nikon FE, and it's currently attached to the MD15 motor drive. And uh, yeah, this one again, oh, I should have said the MD11 doesn't either have a rewind feature. It's only manual rewind as the same as the MDE. Same goes for the MD15. This one has uh, controls for L, that is red, which is lock, which means nothing will happen. 
you have S for single and then you have C for continuous. And on this one, it's a little bit slower actually. It still takes uh, eight AA batteries. Um, the, this one is actually that you have to screw it open and yeah, I had batteries in this one. Look at that. Let's see here. So, unfortunately, I still also have film in this camera, so I shouldn't be. I can't be able to. I'm not able to advance it and show you the operation, but uh, it works perfectly good. I think I've used this when I showed the uh, the uh, Nikon uh, med the medical Nikkor 200 millimeter specialized uh, uh, macro. Uh, macro lens I use this combination on that video but let's move on yeah this one uh, 3.2 frames per second in continuous drive mode and now we actually come up to the more professional high-end cameras this one the Nikon F3 and for this one actually one moment Well, I'm one of those that grew up uh, with Mythbusters on Discovery Channel and uh, one of the uh, presenters, Adam Savage, uh, now you has a show called Tested on YouTube. I would really recommend, I'm going to put a link to that one as well in the description and a special video that came out during this week, actually, uh, where Adam showed, uh, it was a one day build where he took his F3 and made a NASA Space Shuttle era white cover for extravehicular activity for his Nikon F3. And this one as well has, okay, I still have a roll of film in this one, Kodak Ektar. And uh, yeah, this one, the MD4, it also uses uh, eight AA batteries. This has just a little lever you pull and it pops out so and uh, it has also the lock but this one instead of pushing a button to disengage uh, the lock you actually have to raise it up and twist it while pulling it up so you have locked for no action you have uh, s for single and c for continuous and for the md4 it can go from from with if you put the camera in mirror lockup, which basically is you push this silver button and flip that little switch, the mirror in the mirror box will pop up. So you won't be able to see through your viewfinder, but that will give this camera the ability to shoot, according to the manual, six frames a second of 35 millimeter film with this uh, battery grip or motor drive, I should probably say. Normally, operationally, when you have the mirror down and you're focusing through the viewfinder, it will be 5.5 frames per second. So a little bit slower, but not that much. And now we come to the big daddy of them all. The, yeah, these snap-on uh, camera covers, they are really not that really that useful they pop off extremely easily in my opinion but anyway <clears throat> the nikon f2 and this one has the older style uh, pentaprism on it which means means that this one needs a tab on the lens to be operated uh, so you if you have old uh, if i ever come across a good old non-ai lens this camera can use it no problem at all but uh, this one has the md1 attached to it and uh, also the mb1 which is a battery attachment here on the bottom and you open it flip open two doors and you have two containers that houses five batteries each of AA type, AA batteries. So this means that the F2's battery grip with the MD1, it takes a whopping 10 AA batteries, 10 AA batteries. So it makes this camera weigh a bunch. It even has a 
while most of these have a light, a red LED, in order to check if you have a sufficient battery power in the grip or not. This one, the MD1, <laughs> with the MB1 attachment, has actually a voltmeter, or rather a battery check meter. You have a button that you press, and then you have a physical meter that will actually give a reading uh, if you have enough battery power. Also, it's a little bit uh, strange also because as you can see, it pops off all the time. <clears throat> anyway, again, we have, I have a soft release on this as well, but anyway, you have the lock, you have to lift, you have to continuous, and then you have the single, but I also know that you can remove the trigger unit and replace it with different, uh, you know, different models to give it, it in the way you like it. So that might be something for the future, but anyway, <clears throat> Snaps in good, at least. Uh, not like this, but I'm just gonna keep it off. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> this one then has some really interesting levers and mechanical things on the back here. Uh, you have this little thing that you, this is almost like when you, if you have a, a old school rifle, hunting rifle, you flip this up, you push it to the side, and then for opening the back. So it's a little bit of a strange operation to open the back. Such, uh, I should have mentioned that the MD4 has a uh, rewind feature, so this will rewind the film automatically. Well, not automatically, but it will rewind. The same should be true for this one, but the reason I got this fairly cheap, the MD1, was because the rewind function, which is basically a rust, you push this up and you should push this lever to the side. It should rewind automatically. Uh, the motor goes, but I think the clutch assembly is busted in this one. Might be something to mend in the future, but the camera works. It simply will not rewind by itself. Oh, I love that sound. But one of the one of the party pieces with the MD1 is this silver and black dial here. It has a few settings here. It has one, two, three, four, five settings, which says L, M1, M2, uh, M3, and H. <clears throat> These are actually settings for the continuous drive mode and operations. So, looking at the cheat sheet, if you use this on L, depending on the type of battery, if it was nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride batteries, or even if you used a external power connector here, like the MC4, uh, no, MA2 external power unit, you could get this up to a low, it would be 1.3 to 1 frame per second. So you can use this in continuous high and hold down the trigger and it will take one image every second. So a crude form of time lapse maybe. Then at M1 you will have two and a half or two frames per second. M2 that's 3.8 or three frames per second depending on the mode of powering the unit. Uh, M3 4.3 to 3.5 frames per second. <clears throat> and then at high, but it is a little bit of a caveat on the high setting because if you use the high setting, you need to use the mirror lockup function on this one as well. So you need to do the mirror lockup on the D70, on this one in order to uh, get the five or four frames per second that it is uh, that it is capable of doing. So a very interesting battery grip, but it weighs a ton. When this thing is loaded with batteries, it really is a beast of a camera. But still, it's a Nikon F2, made for professionals. Really brilliant piece of kit. So yeah, these are actually the Nikon cameras that I own now, up until now, that have a motor, that I have the uh, accompanying motor drive unit for. And these basically, I have not had any problems with them in my own uh, experience, 
experience, but uh, this might be a little bit of a, a guide also for you if you're out there in YouTube land. If you have a Nikon that can use a motor drive, you might be able to show see a little bit of what camera can use what motor drive. So uh, the F EM, it can use the MDE. I think it's a FG20 or MEG20 can also use the MDE. This is the most universally used drive for the lower lower tier cameras. The FE uh, FE can use the MD11. The uh, FA can use the MD15. F3 you basically have the <coughs> Uh, what is an MD4 and uh, I know it's there is an MD2 the MD1 and MD2 can be used with an icon F2 so yeah that's a little bit of um, uh, trivia for you about the motor drive units and I hope you might have gotten any type of information from this little video but as always this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X1.5 TFX and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. So take care from now on. Bye.